Welcome to the Free Truth Show on These Changing Times Radio. Ning.com. I'm your host, Patrick Lynch. We are broadcasting live from the south coast of England, from the ancient kingdom of Wessex. And my special guest is Mr. Alex Hunter from Canada, uh, who is a targeted individual and has been raising the awareness of targeted individuals um, across the planet and uh, is suffering a great deal from um, uh, electromagnetic attack, microwave attack. And um, he's here to tell his story. And um, let's, uh, let's continue. Okay, so um, what, what I am is a politically targeted individual. I, I think the term targeted individual is some, somewhat weaponized in that um, the uh, ruthless ruling group and their agencies of social control and quote-unquote intelligence idiots have, have gone and uh, labeled them as crazy. And that's so that what we're seeing is not credible. So let's be specific. It's, it, we're being targeted for political purpose all around the globe. Uh -huh. um, they've deployed technology around the globe under the guise of our convenience and protection, of being there for our convenience and protection, which encompasses, and that includes chemtrails, because that's to protect us from global warming, apostrophes around that one. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and, and so that's the guise under which they're spraying us with, um, you know, aerosol, electromagnetic, uh, weather, uh, tectonic, and technotronic. And for those who don't know, for those who don't know, uh, chemtrails are sprayed by aircraft. They are specially converted uh, to spray aluminium oxide and barium salts and strontium. That's the three main ingredients, along with moles and fungus and, and bacteria and um, polymers and things. And it's been going on, uh, across the planet. It's been going on for about twenty years now, nearly twenty years. And um, Alex Hunter has done a great deal in exposing that. They're not vapor trails. If you're lucky to see one these days, they're quite rare. Vapor trails last for about 30 seconds. Uh, chemtrails spread out for miles and form banks of cloud. Quote unquote cloud. It's not real. Yeah, fake cloud. Yeah. Synthetic weather, uh, aerosol banks and things. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what that is is that there are planes spraying us with toxic, carcinogenic, radioactive, pharmaceutical, and pathogenic aerosol, electromagnetic, weather, tectonic, and technotronic, chemical, biological, advanced biological and genetic, and nanobiopolymer warfare. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> yeah, it, is, it, it takes a long time to, to catch up as to why this is happening and what it is. It, it, it's it's an, not an easy it's study. A, it's the it, best description I've ever heard of it. You know, you, you seem to have power-packed all, it all into one sentence there, and that it, it, it it's perfect, you know. Hats off to you there. Thanks. Thanks, yeah, that's what I try to do is it's evolve very, the language very effective. as I yeah. Um, and keep it from becoming psycholinguistics or, or uh, trigger words and, you know, loaded, loaded language, weaponized language, because that's what they do, like geoengineering or, um, you know, targeted individuals even. When they say these phrases, it, or conspiracy theory, oh, they, yeah. that, that's a weaponized phrase. And Which the CIA, the CIA invented that term. It, it's, you can read the documents. Here we are. Anyone expressing an opinion or... Um, against the government is it's got to be labeled this the, use these two words you know and that was what was that in the 60s uh, and, i further back than that well right I, it's, it's and probably it, the 50s and it's on the lips of everyone now you know and, and, and it's quite possible it went back as far as 50 years before that i mean it's 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 not a new thing for them to have weaponized language it's as no. old as language well we know from the work of alan watt that he mentioned that um francis bacon <clears throat> around the 1600s, I think it was, 1500s, uh, yeah, around Shakespeare's time, the whole language was revised. I mean, there wasn't a word for am, like I am. You, Everyone said, I be. And down here in Dorset, people still say, I be doing that like, you know, who are. I, I, I be going down the pub now, you know. And there wasn't, so language was completely reconstructed for mind control purposes across Europe. Yeah. Good, good point. So um, weaponized language is as old as civilization, if you want to call it that. I don't it's, think we've ever really had one. It's Masonic, um, it's Masonic code, isn't it, basically? Totally, yeah. And, and it's, it's designed to prevent personal, public, and institutional, institutional analysis of fact, um, to prevent people from actually doing something about it. 
um, or decoding it uh, because when you uh, bring up something that everybody else has heard 24-7 in the completely controlled media and you introduce a new idea and you only have a few minutes to do it, um, you're easily laughed out of the room by the people that adhere to the, uh, the establishment structure and mandate for them not to look insane. And as they've been uh, coached and indoctrinated and mind-controlled, brainwashed, programmed to think, that people that say things that they haven't heard or aren't familiar with are insane. Um, that it, it's very effective, but really, what's going on is these people are gauging their sanity based on their ability to regurgitate these lies uh, fed to them by the completely controlled media, the agencies of social control, and the shadow government above. And um, it's that's why the lunatics are currently running the asylum. Yeah, I mean, th th this is, a, you have an advanced sort of uh, breakdown for people, advanced activists, sort of, sort of not, not a course, but this, you, know, you, you run a, you, uh, various forums on Facebook and stuff to, um, and it, it's high level understanding, isn't it, that, that uh, people like yourself are uh, displaying for people. It's to try and bring uh, activists um, up to speed to the techniques that they're using yeah. um, to control us and, and uh, to show them how they're using our tribal instincts and most fundamental human instincts to manipulate the majority, which they keep misinformed and disinformed. So the bewildered herd is, is managed this way, mm -hmm. and even as the truth movement ourselves. Well, I mean, one example, one example um, is, is media, of course. I mean, that, that's uh, an essential arm of government, I remember Alan Watts saying, for example. And um, I've just finished reading a book called um, A Faux Cult Pendulum, Umberto Eco. And it's a work of fiction, but it's based in, around these secret societies and the, and the master plan, etc., you know. And I've only just finished it. It's taken me 25 years to finish it. <laughs> and um, in this part, if, if I may just drop in a, a quote here from Umberto Eco... And it talks about how sports and crowds, crowds and sport is used um, in, the, I think it was in the, the 1900s that he said, we'll have stadiums, I think it was um, Bertrand, not Bertrand Russell, I forget now, but the, one of the elite chaps mentioned that we must have stadiums around the country where, around the world, where adults can play child games and people can uh, subjugate their, substitute their lack of power in real life to the stands, to the terraces and roar for their tribe, etc. So it's very scientific, bread and circus, you know. And in this Umberto Eco book, it, it's put very well. It says, afterwards, uh, she was the first to offer a bitter, sarcastic analysis of the orgiastic character of people's religious devotion, week after week and month after month, to the rite of carnival, R-I-T-E, exactly the same sort of tribal witchcraft, she would say, with revolutionary contempt, as the sort uh, as the soccer rituals in which the the disinherited expended their combative energy and sense of revolt, practicing spells and enchantments, you know the crowd chants to win from the gods of every possible world the death of the opposing halfback, completely unaware of the establishment which wanted to keep them in in a state of ecstatic enthusiasm condemned to unreality. That's put rather well, isn't it? Yeah, perfect. Uh, it's, a, it's certainly another form of control. It's the old gladiatorial uh, thing where you're, yeah. you're cheering for the, the bad guys or you're, you're going to be killed by them. It's simple. You know, it's a way to control uh, a population. And that's kind of what I was saying that I was doing with my forums is to try and get people to understand what I'd learned from an intimate perspective by deliberately getting myself targeted when I recognize the significance of them using advanced withheld and weaponized technologies for political control. I, um, I just simply took over the forum for Byron and I stood up higher than everybody else and I was attacked immediately with this stuff. Yeah, and I, mean... I had no, no idea what I was in for. Like It was fatalistic. I, I was writing my resignation half an hour later with the worst chest pain of my life and, and falling asleep at the same time bouncing my head off the, the shelf above my monitor, my computer monitor. Um, and and you, those two things just don't go together. You don't have the worst chest pain of your life and be falling asleep. Your adrenaline would kick in and you would be fighting for your life and, and wide awake. Yeah. And so that was pretty weird. And then that evening I ended up uh, going for the last time to the hospital 
uh, to try and get help for any of this because um, my, I had tachycardia and my heart was racing over about 300 beats a minute by judging by taking my own pulse. And the, um, and the, patient's, my, and the patient's ailments are studied in real time too. Well, when, when, uh, well they, they have the ability to monitor what they're doing to people. Is that what you're saying? Like the intelligence community, the Navy, etc., the people perpetrating these uh, atrocities and crimes against humanity about, uh, against us. Yeah, and es well, especially, especially through the, when the spraying campaign is going on from the chemtrails, yeah, they're, they're able to monitor people's health effects in real time well, as, as they're coming in with chest pains and um, um, yeah. chest, chest problems, breathing problems, etc., you know. Uh, well, look, look at this. How about death? I'm a union member. Yeah. I get emails from my union all the time. There's 10,000 people here in the Lower Mainland in the film union. I kept my union status only because they had a better uh, insurance rate for me. Yeah. So I just kept paying a, a couple of hundred bucks or 300 bucks a year for membership, even though I don't even work there um, anymore because I realize it's part of the Hollywood, uh, you know, Zionist programming mill. And I didn't want anything to do with it. I realized they were brainwashing and mind controlling people with the with our special effects and were as guilty as anyone else by making this stuff look real and interesting for the camera. So I couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Um but I'm still on the mailing list, and I just said this morning to my wife that um, there was a, a, a massive surge in, um, in uh, death uh, on, the, uh, on the emails. So we used to get a death a month a year ago, and now we're having a couple a week. Of people who, who are active? No, not at all. No, union members. Oh, that, that's just the general population. So for targeted individuals, like politically targeted individuals, I'd expect that's, that bell curve is going to go up a lot faster, but they'll mix in uh, members of the bewildered herd, the, the sur surplus population, quote-unquote, their words. Um, as they dumb and bring down that surplus population, they're going to specifically target, as they have throughout history, mm -hmm. uh, the free-thinking intellectual population, including... Uh, politically targeted individuals like activists, dissidents, whistleblowers, investigative reporters, and otherwise politically targeted individuals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been doing this radio show for nearly five years now, off and on, and uh, I may have been subject to some of the symptoms that you talk about um, myself. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. We've discussed this, and uh, how... If you suspect you may be under attack for having an opinion or criticising the government or something... Uh, how would you, what what signs would you look for whilst you're at your computer or, or your everyday life in general? Well, I'd say if you suddenly develop quote-unquote tinnitus, uh, mm -hmm. it's a the good ringing indicator. in the ears, yeah. You, you, you hear super high, uh, extra, extra high or very high, ultra high or very high frequency in your ears or extra low frequency, mm -hmm. tuning frequencies, and this is usually only in males. Um, usually females don't hear the, the uh, very high, ultra high and super high frequencies because mm. they don't have hair in their uh, ear canal. I won't use the biological terms, the, the, you know, the, the, I'll just use layperson's terms. So ear canal, their uh, hair is near the eardrum. And what happens is they, they, because these frequencies are moving at in between 8,000 hertz or 8 and 9, which is a military frequency, or they might be... Uh, going, let's say, five billion cycles per second, if you can imagine <laughs> such a thing, these little hairs are just vibrating and making a really high sound. But I don't really think it's limited just to males. And I've heard um, quite a few females tell me they're having this, the super high and uh, ultra high or very high frequencies, as well as ELF, which is extra low frequencies. And um, so that would be uh, one indicator. Uh, number two, uh, if you couldn't sleep all of a sudden, if you start to have very strange things happening to you while you're sleeping that could be induced with electronic warfare, such as uh, crazy legs or, um, you yeah. know, you just, you, you, you end up uh, like with cortisol whooshing through your veins and you can't sleep and it feels like you have an electrical motor running in your body yeah, you, or you're being triangulated by towers yeah. um, and your muscles are just constantly on and firing. Uh, that would be another indicator, and I'll let you say something, and then I'll go back into more. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I may have um, encountered some of these uh, health effects myself when I'm 
<laughs> we've had a conversation before on Skype and we, we, we discuss uh, uh, what's happening. Um, the, um, the fizzing of your fingers, the kind of uh, like uh, pins and needles in your fingers from touching the keyboard and the ringing frequency changes and alters pitch uh, quite markedly. And often, yeah. often for years, I'd be woken up in the middle of the night with a jolt, like something was switched on, you know. Yeah. And um, other people in this house too. And right. the dreams aren't, they're very Hollywood, they're very um, set. The, usually you have a dream, it's very, um, it, it jumps all over the place and there's no real sort of story to it, but... Uh, when I wake up from some of these dreams that I have these days, um, it's it's almost like I've just watched a film, and it's yes. gone from one scene to the other, and you can remember these dreams a lot better. Right down to the, yeah. the, 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 I mean, you can read things in your dreams and remember what you've read, and crazy, often uh, Armageddon type uh, action movie, proper car chases, flying spaceships, and like you know, like something out of the Matrix, and it's it's completely wild. Some of the adventures I've been on, and these don't seem natural. <laughs> you know, very they're very so very exciting and enjoyable, but often there's driving dreams. Um, that, that, you know, getting away from people, chases and monsters and uh, flying dreams, and you know, like like um, superhero type action movie nightmares. You know. Yeah, well, I'm familiar, so I, I'd call that steered lucid dreaming, or a satanic steered lucid dreaming, and uh, what happens is they're often dark dreams, but everybody that's talking to me lately is telling me that they're uh, survival-like type dreams. My, the guy that helped me produce uh, Dr. Carly's show, um, the last one out of Netherlands, um, he, he helped record it, and he said that he started to have lucid dreams as well. And he was talking about how his children went sideways. They were all going bananas and horrible things were happening in their family. But the, the latest dream, he said, was that he was up in the Arctic or something, in the northern country where it's minus 40-something, and he was trying to get a, a vehicle somewhere, and he, it was just a never-ending thing where it was just one survival scenario after another, and that it seemed completely sewn together like a B-grade Hollywood movie, just like yeah. what you're saying and right. what I've experienced. and so many others. Um, what I think this is, is that they've given, like cell phone technology, like an iPhone 5C or something like that, is about 50 years behind. Uh, behind. And oh, yeah. the, the technology is really so advanced that we are now transmitter receivers because we've been breathing in smart dust. And that's what I'll address next as part of this system as it's sprayed on us and also put in our food. Sprayed uh, from the water, aircraft, yeah medicine etc sprayed from the aircraft yeah yeah so it's it's definitely in chemtrails um and so that would be the smart dust component of it or advanced uh biological and genetic and nanobiopolymer technology i referred to earlier in that string of words that you commented on and said they were good um so what it is is under the guise of our uh, being for our convenience and protection um, chemtrails are being sprayed on us to block out the sun, which they call solar radiation management, and they're they're justifying this with uh, tyrannical science, like they took over the science, uh, and and they're saying that global warming is occurring or climate change, whatever they like, and they say they have to do this to quote unquote protect us, when in actual fact they're using it to genocide us all and to completely control us by spraying smart dust on us, which enables them to target us like a smartphone, smart meter, smart technology, smart grid. I'm sure you get the picture. Uh -huh. yeah. um, <clears throat> so um, after spraying us with that long string of things I just listed, uh, we then have it triggered um, and or exacerbated to a near fatal or fatal level depending on what they want to achieve. Or just to target you, uh, let's say sleep deprive, torture, mentally mutilate or mentally and physically mutilate and incapacitate and ultimately even assassinate people. And that is done through the network of um, 
A, satellites and drones, and now HARP, NEXRAD, TETRA, WEN, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, and telecommunications towers, yeah. smart meter, and the electrical power grid. So they can irradiate, microwave, and mutilate you with frequencies, just like they, uh, Dr. Jose Delgado said they would at Yale in 1974, or uh, U.S. Foreign Policy and National Security Advisor, shadow government frontman and war criminal Zbigniew Brzezinski said in his book, Between Two Ages, America's Role in the Technotronic Era, yeah. published in 1970. 44 years ago, and here they are doing it. What a coincidence. You know, and Monsanto made aluminum-resistant seeds, like, and they've been developing them for decades, and here they are. What a coincidence. You know, I, I don't even believe in coincidences anymore when it has anything to do with uh, geopolitical agendas. Well, the control grid, as, it's, as, it is, as you name it, the control grid, it's, it's, yeah. it, it is for controlling people, fine-tuning their health or detuning their health if you like it's like we're um yeah. it's like we're walking antenna now i guess with all this metal in our system transmitter receivers and that's very important to understand because you're not only uh the, you're not only like uh being broadcast to and transmitted to but they're receiving information from us and the proof of that is that when and i know that sounds completely insane and i don't blame anyone for thinking so mm -hmm. but you know, you, you'd want to catch up quickly because you're, you're out of time and, and we're, we're so far behind on the clock here. It's ridiculous. It's so, so late in the game. And um, if, if they don't uh, buy that, then unfortunately they're just going to get left behind. The point is that um, when they receive from us through synthetic telepathy and, and various uh, uh, mind mapping and scanning procedures that enable them to pick up certain waves and brain activity certain phrases, whether they're thought, or because they become brain patterns even of thinking, thinking a phrase, or even a trigger word. So like keystroke technology works on your computer, when you type in uh, any of the trigger words that I type usually about a, a hundred every five minutes when I'm writing, um, you'll trip uh, the uh, NSA's uh, uh, security surveillance, quote unquote security surveillance, um, and espionage uh, mechanisms, and you'll, you know, you'll get yourself monitored. Well, so I, I recognized that, and I understood, well, that's how they're doing it. They, they'd see me typing an article uh, right away because I hit so many trigger words every minute. So, um, you know, even if you, you hit one, they're probably going to start monitoring you, and I hit, like, them all. Um, yeah. So what happened was... I noticed that I started to get uh, writer's block, but a completely uh, unreal version of it where I didn't know what the hell I was doing anymore. Sometimes I'd just look at my hand and wonder what the hell it was. I, I wouldn't even be able to write. I'd be mind wiped. Um, and that would happen within a, a few paragraphs. Mm. So I, I knew it was because they could easily monitor us on their electronic uh, communications technology. So. I took it offline and away from all technology, and I went off with a pad of paper and a, a pen, and I sat there and I wrote about it like that. And the same damn thing happened every time. Even with a pen, so, so you, when you're away from the computer, yeah. Yes, yeah, with no technology on me whatsoever. And then I was like, okay, now I'm 100% convinced that's real. So I didn't believe this when I first heard it either. Um, just like most of the... the Heard about chemtrails being genocide and population control. I didn't believe that when I heard it in 1998 either. Um, but I looked into it and I saw it was real. And then I started to think about it. But I, I wasn't really a, a really big chemtrail activist until I think about 2007 when I was at the Highland Games and I saw a KC-135 fly overhead of us just puking out massive amounts of uh, aerosol over top of the, the field. We were all standing there look at... at uh, uh, Finlayson Turf Field in Victoria at um, Broughton and Finlayson. And um, we were all looking up, waiting for a Scottish parachute and a Canadian parachute and an American parachute to come down out of the sky. And this this low-flying U.S. KC-135 military tanker yeah. flew by emitting four massive jet streams of, of chemtrails. And I looked at my dad and I, I looked at my children and I said, you guys see that? 
And my sister and my father said, oh, that's nothing, don't even, you know. And the kids and I watched in horror as they went into that double think mode, and we went around talking to people from that point on until 5 o'clock. So it was 12 o'clock when it happened, and we went around talking to people until 5 o'clock. And we were looking up, and then after, what happened was it was a completely clear day, and then suddenly it was completely overcast. Yeah. And um, so we're looking up, and we're, we're, we could see a little hole in it by 5 o'clock. And then you could see a massive amount of trails way up high in the sky. Yeah. So uh, I guess what they did was they put out a screen that they could deploy over a civilian pop or any Cover what they're doing, yeah. Any theater. That's right. And and it, it went from one horizon to the other within a very few amount of minutes, possibly 15, but I, I, I can't remember exactly how long it was. But it was really quick. And then when you saw the holes in that screen, you could see that, the chemtrail grids above it through the holes and there were massive amounts of them mm -hmm. and then of course it was overcast for the next few days so that was uh whenever the highland games were in victoria bc canada in 2007 that happened and i guess anybody could look up the weather from that time if they have uh well you, you certainly don't get it on the, the traditional weather but you you might find people talking about that or something online oh um, yeah i mean the weatherman will say Oh, it'll be, it should be nice, clear skies tomorrow, you know, and uh, it's yeah. not. It's like grids of chemtrails, you know. It's very common. Right. It happens, happens every day. Massive grids yeah. across somewhere in the world, you know. Absolutely, yeah. And and uh, so they don't report accurately on anything anymore, and that's kind of <laughs> like that Orwellian double think. And, and, and <coughs> here's, the news. here's the most important thing you can get from this, is that... They're separating us into groups even by doing this to us. By giving us the truth, they're separating us and making yet another divide mm -hmm. through which they classify um, or capture and then data mine, classify, and process us as per NDAA in the comfort of your own home. You, you, can, be, you can be mutilated mentally. You can be tortured, sleep-deprived, incapacitated, assassinated, you can be given diseases, any any number of different diseases, Lyme disease being a case in point, or what they call fibromyalgia, or all kinds of things, Alzheimer's, whatever. Neurological disorders, heart, respiratory uh, diseases, degenerative conditions, spinal conditions. They can twist any kind of injuries or pathology you have. And it's very creepy that, uh, you know, you know some of these colleagues of mine, like Bruce, etc., people with injuries, that they're actually torquing or uh, um, causing a helical twist to his spine when he's needed spinal surgery for nine years. It's completely effective in silencing him because he's not there to do anything anymore. So <laughs> in my case, about three months ago, probably a little more now, I was outside trimming the hedge and I suddenly had this sensation that I breathed in a bunch of battery acid like a powder. And um, it wasn't it wasn't a powder because there was nothing in the air around me. I looked and it, there was nothing, and I stopped breathing as quickly as I could. As soon as I felt it burning my mucosa in my throat and my lungs, I instantly stopped inhaling. Um, and then I, I drank a, a whole beer at once. I just washed it down and tried to dilute it with beer because that's what Werner told me to do. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, at that point, what happened was... Um, it, it did dilute the burning a little bit, but not in my lungs, of course. And from that point forward, I've been uh, fighting the most ridiculous health challenges. The smallest things will, will end up uh, turning into major medical crises. Um, like a flea bite went septic, and then I had this massive infection through $550 worth of naturopathic and herbal uh, cures on it, and it didn't work. And uh, we, my friends and I, who know how to look after things like this said well i must have done improper wound care at first and i said well sure i was used to being able to scratch a flea bite with not getting uh you know a major septic reaction but i have a hole where that infection was now in my left ankle um and um so once that went away i i finally ha had to capitulate and take antibiotics by the way so i took a a form of uh penicillin like i think it was um I'll try and remember the name of it and then get back to that. But it, it was one that's good for skin. Um, <clears throat> so I took that, and it, it sure enough, it, it eradicated the, the, the infection, and it dried up and went away and just left a big red hole in my ankle. 
Mm -hmm. um, but the next thing <clears throat> that happened was I, I got this horrific form of uh, pneumonia. And um, so at first it came on kind of like bronchitis, and, and it, it seemed to be electronically triggered because it would only happen at first when I was doing activism, and it came on more and more and more. And then um, after a while I had four different, well, at first I had three different very weird sticky kinds of um, material in my lungs. And um, I'm not trying to be gross, but I'm going to describe it. Sure. Because it's, we're, we're talking, it justifies it because of what we're talking about. Um, so I had a mass of um, phlegm that was like, like carpenter's glue or construction bull grip or, or adhesive that was so thick, sticky, and unreal that it, it defied anything that I've ever heard of in, in biology. Um, and when you spat it on the side of a glass, it would not slide down. It just stayed there, and if you left it there long enough, it would just dry there or accumulate if you did it again. <laughs> now, I know this is a little ugly, but anyway, let's let's move forward. That's fine. There was also a clear... Now, that, that, that phlegm was the color of maybe light coffee or something to darker to... It could go yellow or green if it's infected, but it couldn't get infected because I was uh, aspirating um, uh, super silver or submicron colloidal silver, 22 parts per million, yep. and breathing it in and holding it in. And um, I kept doing that throughout the whole ordeal. Now, the other substance was a clear, uh, sticky goo, which was very atypical as well. I'd never seen anything like it. Um, and you, you could take this stuff and hold it up at eight feet, and it would just go stretch all the way down to the floor if it was big enough a piece, and, and it wouldn't break. It was bizarre. Yeah. I spat it in the sink, and, <clears throat> and uh, it, it wrapped around a spider web like it was in the sink, and, and I was amazed at the strength of the spider web for holding this crap up, especially after I turned on the faucet, and it hit this stuff, and it glazed, it went, formed a, a, a membrane over top of the drain, and even though the water force was hitting it directly, it did not go down. That is how crappy this could be. Now, I was trying to cough that stuff out of my lungs, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, the third substance was a very strange sticky foam that is also electronically exacerbated and it was blocking all the smaller components of my airways while this goo was blocking the larger ones and the big mass was blocking the major ones like the bronchi bronchial tube etc et and uh, the reason I know that is because I had to uh, design a way to get it the hell out of my lung in order to breathe during a fatalistic breathing emergency, which was triggered with electronic warfare. Um, and then the fourth substance was something you might want to call water. Um, although it was an odd color, it was just liquid. Um, so I could accept that that might be there, but all these other three things were completely synthetic, they were completely atypical, and there is just no way in the world that there's anything that would cause that that we've known up until now. Well, do you so, remember the... Um, um, sorry, um, yeah. Do you remember the, uh, we'll have a little break in a minute while I stop the recording and start again, um, just to ease uploading. Um, do you remember the, well, the chemtrails the, a few years ago, they'd get the mix wrong and people couldn't jet wash this gunk off their cars, you know. It's, yeah. it, it sounds a bit like that and uh, whole trees were just covered in a mass of kind of like a, like a, like a duvet of this yeah. stuff. And that's the polymers, you know, it's similar to that kind of thing where you get the, uh, Right. The uh, little so, spider web type, spider web looking type uh -huh. um, arrangements so on, on the grass. nanobiopolymer technology, and it's triggered right. by frequency or activated and triggered or uh, exacerbated by frequency. I, I, I've, seen, I've seen pictures of a whole field in Lincolnshire in England covered with these spider's webs. And they look like spider's webs, and they're not spider's webs. Because if you touch them with a stick, you mustn't touch them with your hands, uh, they just disappear completely, immediately. So I've seen, I've taken pictures of the, my grass here, my lawn here, and um, it's covered in these these polymer type arrangements that come in, that are being sprayed by the aircraft after heavy spraying. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and so it's a big part of this electronic warfare. And uh, when you go to report on this sort of thing, like I I was, uh, they come right after you and they make it a lot worse. 
So what I did was I just kept, because I was unafraid of dying, I just kept doing it uh, to provoke them. And um, I had, uh, within the first few weeks, I, I went into what became three weeks of breathing emergencies, which occurred three times a night and uh, up to six times during the night and day at the worst point, um, which went on for three weeks. And I had to have uh, my wife keep me alive. Like she had to drain my lungs and help me blow stuff out of my lungs when I could get enough air in to force it out. And um, I was waking up with my gag reflex closed on top of all this material in my lungs. So you're being waterboarded in the comfort of your own home as per NDAA. What a coincidence. There's another one. Hmm. And um, so I'm not trying to terrify people. There was no point during that at which I felt scared. I was only angry and determined enough to survive to try and show people that, how this was working. Yeah. And then um, it wasn't. It was only shortly after that that Obama signed and reinforced that uh, document or that uh, uh, bill, uh, enabling them to arrest anyone with a respiratory illness. Uh -huh. And the significance of that shouldn't be lost on your audience at all. Uh, with, with, with the Ebola thing going on, yeah. <clears throat> with the Ebola thing well, going on as well, it's a perfect way to round people up um, and put right. them in quarantine and. and Forced yeah, vaccinations. It, I mean, they talked about forced vaccinations in, uh, you know, in many cases before. John P. Holdren, the White House science czar, um, is well known for his for his book. You know, where he stated that there's going to be forced sterilizations, forced vaccinations, and here we are. You know. Yeah, totally. And uh, so the significance of the fact that the aerosol. The weaponized version of the Ebola that can tra uh, be transmitted through aerosol, so it's airborne, um, is, I, I don't find it coincidental that it's traveling around in synthetic electromagnetic aerosol banks. And I don't think anyone else will after hearing all this either. I mean, this is what we do is we articulate it to the rest of you so that you can pick up the torch and hold it as high and run as far up the field with it as you can and then you hand it off to the next person, and that's the only way we're ever going to have any hope. Um, the other side of that coin is that they very well might just be classifying and, and processing us all, and, and that they wanted a larger number, and they really don't give a crap what we think or say, because mm -hmm. we're dead to them already, and they're just going to flush us down the Orwellian memory hole. And I think that's much more likely the case, because these people didn't stay atop the, the world and get to the highest uh, positions of power by being nice or or sympathetic or yeah, they're ruthless psychopaths anything. yeah ruthless psychopaths. sociopaths actually yeah and they're satanic uh, so they're satanic uh, sociopathic inbred parasites that have been ruling over us for a very long time and they've weaponized outer space so he who controls outer space controls the planet and um, this is part of the star wars that um, they were developing using your own tax dollars we're going to not take a break because I've just been informed we've got 10 minutes left, unfortunately, Alex. The time goes so quick okay. when we're discussing these things. Um, right. Is there anything that you'd like uh, important, uh, especially important, um, that's foremost in your mind that you, you want to get uh, a message out to people with? Well, you, you may as well lose your fear and stand up and fight back irrespective of the odds because uh, the cost of not doing so is, is that you're complicit and therefore it's your soul. Um, silence is complicity. You, you really uh, you have to leave it all on the track, unfortunately, and the cost to your family and yourself is dear always. Um, the people around me that have been uh, knocked away from me or were some of the most tenacious people I've ever met and that I was uh, so proud to have them around for as long as I have but all one needs to do is go back through my Facebook page and look at the people that and the patterns that re repeat and you'll see people were supporting me and and the people that stood up the most you'll see a graph where they they do more and more and more and more and they start reporting getting attacked more and more and more and more and, more, and then yeah, sooner I've seen later that. they yeah. just yeah I've seen that, die yeah. out yeah and, and there's, it's literally hundreds of people now over the last three years, let's say. Um, so this I, I'm still is hanging in up. there. With, I'm still hanging in there with you. Yeah, Alex. you are. And, and it's, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it, it's a testimony to your character, your strength of character and your determination and resolve and, and um, your commitment to what's right, to good, and uh, to the children and, and the elderly and infirm and um, women. Well, and, I, I remember. And, thanks, Alex. But... Um, yeah. I consider you one of the most brave 
uh, people out there doing what you're doing. I know you don't consider yourself brave, but it is a phenomenal uh, self-sacrifice. You, you, you know, you, you, you're allowing yourself to be targeted so people can see how it's done, what happens to people, you know. It's incredible. Well, um, it's, it's almost like um, walking in front of the tank in Tiananmen Square, you know, just to show how naked tyranny oh. works, you know. But uh, yeah, I always right. said, in, that's, in, in, that's... In, in my case, I always said that before I understood how the world really worked, um, I always said that um, if, because I used to watch um, a lot of history and read a lot of history about the Second World War, and I always said, if I, if that tyranny ever arose again in, around me, I would do everything in my power to stop it. And I, I, I kind of have really, you know. Yeah, yeah. You did what you could do, and you did it the way you could do it. And I watched the whole thing. With all things considered, you did as much as you could do. And I think that's what we all have to do um, at once. And and it yeah. might create a, a scenario where they speed the thing up on us. I I hope not. But I I do always look at their contingency plans, and I know the strategies as they use this synergistic uh, synergistic um, complex synergistic warfare against us. Okay, so. Um, so uh, there's no escaping it. Is that what you're saying? It doesn't look good. There are. I mean, you talk. We you hear a lot about Faraday cages, and you're the only person I know that's poo pooed the Faraday cage. And and, and... I poo poo everything. I, I poo pooed everything I've heard so far. Organite or I don't care what. Organite. Yeah, that's another one. And the and the chem busters. You know, it's a joke. Yeah. You know, well, if they anyone talking... who's talking. I went to a. I saw a talk of a chemtrail activist, a noted chemtrail activist in 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 the in the UK, and one of the first things he talked about on, on it was chem busters in his garden and how they work, and he even took one to his talk to show people, you know, what are you doing? They don't work. It's a con. Yeah. You know, so anyone and it, talking about chem busters, you know, they're they're not right in the head, really. Plus, plus putting it mildly. And um, they've been misled by somebody they, they actually believe in, and so they go and they, they agree with them that, um, yes, indeed, you know, um, they do work and they, they have faith and confidence and hope that it's going to work. And, no, this, and guy, they, this guy built one in his garden, showed videos of it of claiming that it was working. Look, you know, oh, yeah, it happens all the time, but if it's working, what the hell's going on with what's in the sky then? Like, why yeah, is where it, does it go? There? You can push it you over know, to your neighbor's house, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and any, exactly, exactly, exactly. And um, anyway, um, it's selfish, if isn't the it? damn things were working, why did they never stop me from getting targeted? So, and even if they did work and they don't, um, We've got the if they back, did so. work, they'd just come at you another dozen or 80 ways. And, and they would affect the same damn electro electronic behavior modification they were setting out to do. Um, Using these means and various uh, components of the grid, and and uh, and they also have handheld devices. So if they were gang stalking people, if they really bothered to do that anymore, I don't think they do. I think that was just like um, maybe an initial trial or a way to sort of make it look like organized crime is doing it, not the globalist government or your government. So they could blame it on someone else and get reasonable doubt in court. You know, it's machined into all their crimes. It's their mo. Um, we've got about four minutes left here, so um, yeah, we've we've spoken about the chemtrails. We've um, uh, earlier on, I was uh, in the early part of the program, I was addressing the vaccinations, um, having mercury and damaging people's health, and the World Bank stenographer saying that it was a an important part of our population reduction policy. That vaccines are an important part of our vaccination policy. Um, Bill Gates is on video on the TED conference saying that. Um, if we do a really good job on vaccines, we can reduce the 6.7 billion world population by maybe 10 or 15 percent. Ted Turner says he wants to kill everyone, and they're openly bragging and getting rounds of applause and standing ovations about culling the public now. So they're very open about what's happening now. This is not a quiet eugenics um, kill system going on. It's really sped up, and it's technological now. So. Don't take the vaccines, folks. For God's sake, don't take the vaccines. You know, and now you have to yes. pay. Now you have to pay nine pounds for your Tesco supermarket vaccine. You know, 
And the guy's yeah, and the guy's bragging to me that he's oh I've been I've been, I've I've vaccinated uh, a thousand over a thousand people. You know this is in the supermarket. You know. So don't take them. And uh, yeah. Well That's yeah. Super, well folks, we, we've got to wrap it up. We've got less than a couple of minutes, I think. Um, yeah. We'll talk again, Alex, very soon. We'll we'll what we'll produce is um is a series of videos perhaps where. We can just upload them and don't have to be on air and you can take your time. There's no rush and there's nothing worse, you know. So, um, yeah. you've been listening to the Free Truth Show on these Changing Times Radio, broadcasting live from the ancient kingdom of Wessex on the south coast of England. I've been your host, Patrick Lynch, and my special guest has been the very excellent and most honourable Mr. Alex Hunter from Canada. Um, he's a an activist, a political activist that's been targeted um, and tortured. And we must do all we can to encourage and support people like Alex Hunter, either financially or chuck him a few quid or um, help push his information out there onto the web and share it and like it and all that stuff. Because the time for being quiet is over. The time for being complicit is over. So thank you, Alex Hunter. Yeah, thank you, Patrick, and I encourage people to print it off and record the, uh, to DVD or a CD um, or MP3, any of the radio shows, videos, etc., that are pertinent to this uh, topic. Yeah, I'll leave, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the link for you under, under the um, video on YouTube, and uh, people excellent. can catch you as Alex Hunter on Facebook, okay? Yes, Or FTNWO, which is... Uh, that's right. F, Which the means new world fight order. the new world order. Hard. Yeah. Oh, really? I thought it was a swear word. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, well, it, it could be taken <laughs> that way. All right. Great. Thanks, Alex, and I wish you well, and Thanks, I, wish, I wish you the best of health, and I hope it eases off for a little while and give you some respite, and um, we'll do all we can to support you and get your message out there, mate. Thanks, my brother. Take care. Good night. Good talk. Thank and you. it's good night for me. Patty. Hey, good luck. It's... Good night from me, Patrick Lynch, your host of the Free Truth Show. Until next week, uh, Wednesday, 9 p.m., these changing time to radio.ning.com. And remember, folks, fight the new world order with every fiber of your being. Good night. Wake up, people, now get up and break your chains and be free.